Um, now, with the board's um, consent, I'd like to change um, and bring forward item five, the emerging clinical commissioning group configuration ahead of the operations directorate, because my sense is that that discussion would then flow more appropriately into the, uh, the operations directorate. Is the board content for me to do that? Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you very much. So, Barbara, um, <coughs> over to you in terms of clinical commissioning group configuration. Thank you, Chairman. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this paper um, brings together for the board the proposed configurations of emerging clinical commissioning groups um, across England, um, those uh, uh, nascent clinical commissioning groups that want to come forward to be authorised and established during the latter half of 2012-13, ready to go um, live in their role uh, in April uh, 2013. Um, they will be established uh, as NHS bodies, and as you'll see from the paper, um, the, the proposed numbers are 212 at the moment, which is a, uh, a very significant change from some of the original numbers um, which were first uh, considered. Um, and what we have seen um, is groups of practices uh, across England coming together um, and determining their um, uh, geographical coverage, the patients that they'll represent. Um, and I think that we should see this, uh, the position we find ourselves in the moment, I think we should really celebrate the success um, of the last 12 months of those um, practices in the um, proposed CCGs um, and those people who have supported them in SHAs and PCT clusters because um, the work to get us to this, uh, this point has been tremendous. Um, and I think it is a remarkable <coughs> achievement um, in that these, uh, uh, as the practices have come together, they've come up with a set of arrangements um, which not only allow them to be responsible for their registered population, which is one uh, clear responsibility that they have, um, but these NHS bodies will also be responsible for all the unregistered uh, uh, patients within uh, the area um, and for anyone requiring uh, uh, emergency or urgent care um, who happens to be within their area at the time. Um, and through the work um, of the practices and the uh, PCTs supporting them, um, we have attached to the paper a map uh, showing that the whole of England um, is covered. The CCGs have been able to um, define their boundaries and the boundaries are material really to the unregistered uh, population and the delivery of urgent care. The still the basis of the um, CCG is still the practices and their registered populations. Um, uh, so I think we should uh, congratulate them that um, they have uh, been able to come together with a common interest of making sure that they look after all the communities and all the populations uh, in England. Um, the CCGs at the moment are um, uh, working on their constitutions and uh, determining how they will be governed, um, the creation of their governing bodies. Um, and appointing their senior personnel ready to come forward uh, to authorisation. Um, the tables identify um, not only um, the numbers of the CCGs and their geography, but also the names of each of them. You will notice that uh, they all have a name which includes NHS um, and a geographical um, uh, it's an, an geographical identification as well as uh, a CCG. Um, and I think it is important to remember as well that these are very, similarly are very different organisations than any that we've seen before in the NHS based on the membership of the constituent practices. But with those, those constituent practices um, and the clinicians in them having a, uh, a remarkable responsibility to ensure that uh, working with their patients and their populations and all the other key stakeholders and particularly all the health and social care professionals um, in the area um, and working with their health and wellbeing boards can um, begin to identify the best services for that locality that they can commission. Um, I think there are some uh, interesting uh, uh, numbers that we can just go through. Uh, there are uh, 212 emerging uh, commissioning groups which incorporate 8,355 uh, GP practices. Um, the smallest uh, proposed CCG is in Corby, um, which has only six practices and a population of 67,800. Um, the largest CCG proposed is North East and West Devon, um, which is 130 practices and a population of 901,000. So you'll see board that the, the, uh, members of the board there's a, uh, a very significant variation. Um, the vast majority of the CCGs are between uh, sort of 150 and 400,000. Um, <coughs> 16 with a population of between 500,000 uh, and a million. 
Um, 86 of the CCGs proposed exactly match uh, current local authority boundaries. Um, some actually cover, span two local authorities. Many CCGs are wholly within a local authority. Um, a small number do cross local authority boundaries, um, but those CCGs are working, those CCGs working very closely with their local authorities um, on um, what will be best for that population because the reasons for um, the crossing local authority boundaries are usually to do with their patient flows where um, patients from different local authorities all have one particular hospital as their main provider and the desire for the CCG to be able to represent that population in the delivery of NHS services whilst recognising absolutely um, the need for them to um, uh, be able to represent the population uh, with their local authority on, on those areas um, where health and social care overlap um, and other health and wellbeing issues. Um, the paper also identifies the authorisation waves. We have 35 uh, CCGs coming have come forward to be in wave one. Those um, uh, nascent organisations are um, working very hard on their preparation for authorisation and their stakeholder surveys are underway. Um, that wave should be completed by October 2012. Uh, waves two, three and four then follow each month. Um, so that between October and January, the board will wish to note that hopefully we will be bringing forward uh, 212 um, CCGs to be authorised uh, and established uh, with or without con um, with or without conditions. Um, I think that the, we shouldn't underestimate the magnitude of the authorisation process. And the board might uh, might also wish to note that we've recently um, awarded a contract to PricewaterhouseCoopers to support uh, this process. Um, the bulk of that contract is for support, additional resource uh, and additional capacity at, at this, uh, this very busy time in terms of, an, of analysis and assessment, um, but also um, to support us in the assurance of the process, making sure that it's robust and consistent and give the board um, additional assurance on that. Um, I think it's also um, worth, uh, at the same time, me uh, relaying to the board um, that alongside the process for CCGs, um, we have also been um, going through the assessment uh, and, and authorisation process for commissioning support organisations. Um, and uh, the board uh, will want to note that there's been really good progress with the CSS um, and they will be so material because without uh, comprehensive commissioning support um, the board won't be able to be assured as CCGs go throughout authorisation that they can deliver all their roles. Um, uh, 23 of 26 potential organisations were successfully went successfully through checkpoint two uh, of the process and will now move to checkpoint three. And the recruitment of the managing directors of those uh, commissioning support organisations will be um, uh, will be undertaken during June. Um, the board has confirmed its commitment to uh, hosting these organisations for a transitional period, um, but with the clear expectation that these hosting arrangements will be formed in a way um, for them to be at arm's length and clearly separated from the NHSCB's core and routine business um, so that we can, um, we can both ensure that the organisations have the best uh, possibility to move to independence, um, which uh, is, is, is their wish, um, and we will be will have a major role in supporting them to do that, um, but also um, to ensure that the board's core business uh, is not deflected from by these very significant um, hosting arrangements, which which could be in the order of 7,000 staff. Um, and I would propose, uh, if I might, that I bring something to the next board meeting, um, which gives greater clarity on the programme arrangements for the hosting of commissioning support, um, in order to so that we can see how it works along alongside the CCG authorisation process. So if I could ask finally then that the board will um, would do uh, four things really. Firstly, note the work that's been done um, and the uh, names and uh, geographical distribution of these 212 CCGs. I think it's important also if the board could note the indicative running costs um, uh, for the individual CCGs. You will remember that the running costs uh, were based on £25 per head of 
population. Um, there is a difficult and complex calculation to be made to determine exactly what that population is, um, given that I've already explained, explained that it is a mixture um, of the registered practice population and responsibility for unregistered patients, and also that um, there had to be a moderating process to make sure that the final number matched the ONS statistics for, uh, for the population of the whole of England. Um, I'd like the board to agree that these are the configurations uh, and these are the 212 <coughs> organisations that it will expect to support through the authorisation process um, and also approve uh, the timing where you will see that we have um, a, a, a slight skew in the timing. We felt it was important to keep um, a relatively small number in wave one, given that it would be the first round. Um, wave two and three are the largest waves, and wave four will then be the smallest. And all these um, the places in the waves have been uh, agreed by the individual CCGs themselves. Thank you, um, Barbara. And, uh, and I think on just some of that point, it looks like uh, the wave two CCGs are double the number of wave one, reflecting that, 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 that increase. 